How do you respond when your entire world just changed? I'm serious. Think about it for a moment. Weeks ago, you weren't even thinking about social distancing or practicing isolation. Now, how do we network? How do we grow our business? How do we stay connected? Furthermore, how can we be of service during this time? Join our host, Tony Grebmeyer, and today's guests as they share their best practices and insights to help you navigate the waters ahead. Welcome to Networking Remote. Welcome to episode number 14 of Networking Remote 2020. It's a discussion of business, connections, and community. And today's show has three J's. Well, if you talk about the guest with the middle initial J, there's actually four J's. So I'm no joke. I'm going to introduce you today to serial entrepreneur and savage marketer, Jeff J. Hunter, podcaster, agency owner, Jeremy Slate, and CMO of Primal Life Organics, Josh Felber. Now, uh, when you are watching this, comment along and we'll be sure to ask some questions today that come up through the conversation so these entrepreneurs can give you some feedback. Uh, I just want to welcome you three first and foremost to the show. So uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Hey, morning. Hey, rock on, man. Hey, a serial entrepreneur, Jeff J. Hunter. Man, I'm so tired. It's like 3.30 in the morning. I finally went to bed. Jeff, what were you doing at 3.30 in the morning on the internet? <laughs> he was hustling, bro. Nah, I'll be honest with you. I was on an 11-game win streak on Call of Duty, so... You've been streaming games of late. Is that something that you like? Yeah, I was streaming last night. Yeah, no. I, so I'm working on it as a serial entrepreneur. It's what people don't know is I used to be heavily involved in uh, esports. I actually used to work with Justin.tv. I helped come up with the name Twitch.tv, actually. Um, but I haven't really enjoyed a game, you know, like in a long time. And Call of Duty came out and everybody hopped on the bandwagon. And funny enough, just in the past seven days, I've had six client calls whilst playing Call of Duty with them. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, what? Could you, Jeremy, could you imagine like having a podcasting call with like your guys? Like, hold on a second. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, I'm back. Now, today we're going to be talking about how to rise I've your podcast. I've got been driving, race. man. They'll be driving down the street and you're like, honk, honk, honk. And I'll be like, dude, can you not do this in the car? <laughs> Well, hey, I'm excited. Jeff J. Hunter is here. Jeremy Slate. I followed Jeremy for, man, three or four years online and finally got a chance to connect uh, middle of last year and then was just able to be a guest recently in his community, which is awesome. And then the guy at the top, I've known the longest, Josh Felber, uh, host of The Top, in my mind, one of the best podcasts you could listen to, uh, Making Bank. Uh, the likes of Damon John, you kind of Dave Asprey, you name it, you could probably find it. Go go check out the show. Super super successful marketer, and he's he's launched a really cool product. Um, so we're all today. We're just gonna have a conversation, and how this kind of works is uh, I'll be your kind of host, but I'm involved in the conversation as well. And it's really just to kind of figure out what you're doing right now during uncertain times in our in our lives you know this started around covid um you can't turn on social media or the news and listen to to what's going on in the conversation in the world and what i try to do is really just have a conversation about what are you personally doing right now to make an impact in the world um, what can you do to help your your tribe your community your clients to be really successful and let's just have fun today. And, uh, you know, first, I just want to say thank you. But Josh, um, since I've known you the longest, I'm going to let you have the honors of going first today. Maybe just catch us up what, when you first heard about lockdown, COVID, and, you know, gosh, it's like 13 weeks ago. And then where you're from, so the world knows where they're listening, what, what COVID looks like now in the community and, you know, how I think Ohio is back to kind of like full bore, everything's yeah. open. So talk about that and then we'll go to Jeremy and then we'll go to Jeff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when, um, I guess rewind back to beginning of March, um, we were just getting ready to jump on a flight to head out to natural products expo, uh, in about 24 hours and wondering what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden they just shut everything down and said, no, no event. And we're like, man, this is just kind of crazy. And then that from there, it just kind of started the spiral and states started closing, locking stuff down. And, and Ohio was kind of one of the, I think in the first five or 10, probably the first five states that get, that go, went on lockdown and stuff. Um, 
So, I mean, from that perspective, um, we were one of the early ones. Fortunately, uh, with our business, um, it was deemed essential in Ohio. So we could continue to operate. Um, all of our marketing team worked from home. And then production and, f um, production and fulfillment and everything stayed operating and everything. Um, I think I had the coronavirus back in November, actually, after I got back from L.A. Um, I, my kids had it and I had it and I had all the symptoms for about two weeks and um, and I don't ever get sick. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of people, my neighbor said the same thing. He thought maybe in December his kid came home from school one day. Yeah. And it wasn't like a normal strand that he normally had gotten. And then next thing you know, everybody in the family had gotten it. And then looking back, he goes, huh. Maybe that's what that was. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, so, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, for, for us, just in general, um, we homeschool the kids and everything. So that didn't change much. That process didn't change a whole lot. I mean, we, it, instead of going out to eat, you know, a couple times a week, now you just make extra food at home kind of a thing um, until, until some of the restaurants started to do pick up and deliveries or pickups, I guess, mainly, uh, and everything. And, oh, as you mentioned, I'm in, um, Ohio. I'm just a little South of Cleveland, Akron area. Um, so it's not as bad as some of the other States, especially right now. Um, for, we're fortunate where there's not any kind of rioting or craziness from that perspective going on. I keep looking for bricks in the neighborhood, but haven't found any yet. So luckily there, um, but, well, uh, I gotta ask this question cause this has been on my mind for so many people. And I know, I know, Josh, you're going to answer this with just so much poise. Big question. So how many rolls of toilet paper do you still have in your house? <laughs> well, for, a funny story was my wife actually a few weeks before that thought she was – because we used like the Amazon and the auto reorder and all that kind of stuff. She was like, oh, we need to – like she thought we needed uh, more paper towels. So she hit the thing and it ended up stocking up like on 20 – like whatever the four packs or six packs, it was supposed to be for your towels, but it ended up being toilet paper. So we ended up having a bunch come regardless ahead of time. And we're like, Oh, I guess we were ahead of the curve on that one. So Josh is like, Hey, uh, $5 for a roll. I'm outside <laughs> selling right now. So, well, Dude, hey, I'm excited like when that whole thing here, started but... and like, um, I didn't know that like toilet paper was like a thing yet. Like I was just, we literally were out of it. And I'm like, this is going to be a real problem in a couple hours. So I go to the store to buy it. And I'm holding it. I'm like, wow, where did all the toilet paper go? So I'm, I'm buying toilet paper. And this lady in Target looks at me and she goes, where did you get that? I'm like, over there. And she starts lurching towards me. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is mine. There's more over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the crazy part. Jeff's got a funny story. So we're going to we'll tee that up for a little bit about kind of what something went viral for him uh, in TikTok. But, you know, Jeremy, a little bit where you're from and mm -hmm. also kind of maybe – what you've really noticed, you know, for yourself personally, you know, 13 weeks ago to now, like Josh reflects, he's like, I think I had it in November. Yeah. Well, it's funny enough, like my whole family was sick as hell in, in December. Um, like, and I don't get sick, man. Like we're pretty healthy. Like that stuff doesn't happen. And like, I was at a commission for like days. So I was pretty convinced that something was going on there. Like I said, don't really know, but it is what it is. Um, and I, I got to tell you, like when this whole thing started out, like, I was, I was pretty bummed because like we've been on a big growth trajectory, which really hasn't changed that much. But in terms of like opportunities I was getting to get more visibility for the brand, like uh, in a 10 day period, like I was supposed to be in Thailand. I was supposed to be uh, out in Arizona. I was supposed to be in Dallas. So we had a lot of really, really great stuff planned that was going to help, you know, leveling up the brand. Then it just kind of got canceled. So you kind of get bummed about that. And you're like, all right, we'll take a look at the situation. I guess what else can we do here? And um, really, we, we just looked at what can we do to help people. So I'm a member of a, a business association called the Effective Management Association. So I really doubled down for just creating free content for a lot of our business owners that were really, you know, in trouble, needed help. Like it wasn't something to make money off of. It was just something to help people. And honestly, um, since we work from home um, and our whole team worked from home anyway before all this started, um, not much has really changed. You know what I mean? Like we did hire two more people. Uh, we did bring on another virtual assistant, which, you know, shout out to Jeff, because what was it, about two years ago, Jeff, you really kind of helped me get my feet wet in the virtual assistant space. And now we have we have four virtual team and then five people here in the U.S. But we hired two more people during this whole thing as well, because we've kind of been growing at the same time. Um, but, you know, the thing that's driving me nuts, man, is I'm, I'm here in New Jersey um, and like, uh, you know, Murphy keeps clamping down tighter. And I'm like, I just yeah. want to go to the gym, dude. Like, I just want to go work out. I'm dying here. <laughs> you know, the uh, 
that's what's probably been interesting is how different the states are. Yeah. Just how different. Because I remember I was, you know, Josh, Josh and I have a mutual friend, Vinny Fisher. He called me. He's like, oh, my gosh. He posted something about Ohio, you know, shut down. He's like, it was like one of the first couple. Because yeah. I had just gotten back to the states on March 10th. Yeah. So and I came back and I walked into the office and I felt like a total outsider because everybody's like, dude, you've been in Europe. You, you need to go home. And so I was in here for like two days and then I bailed home. Um, and, you know, through whatever it is, I never got tested, but I definitely, whatever, whatever those symptoms are, this guy felt like he went through the ringer. I'm going to classify it first as jet lag, but no matter what, when you're waking up in the middle of the night and you're like, <gasps> and you, you know, and it's, and it's hard. Like that was what I experienced it, you know? So I started mm -hmm. drinking hot tea, yeah. and just keeping warm tea by my bed when I had sleep at night. So I'm excited. So, uh, command your brand. Yes, Jeremy, sir. Um, you're doing well. It's going. It's going in the right direction. We we just had our our second best uh, total sales month in the four four year history of the company uh, last month. So you know May was definitely a pretty good month for us. Uh, like I said, we we hired a few more people, which has been great, and we're we're looking to hire a couple more people probably in June as well. All right, we got awesome. rainbow bright guy over there, Mr. Jeff J. Hunter. <laughs> I, I'm I'm honored, man. Uh, Jeff and I got a chance to really get to know each other. Uh, gosh, in 2017, I launched Destroying Excuses Live, and and Jeff, you came, and I, I'm not going to say it, but I'm pretty darn sure it was one of your first speaking opportunities that you really, really had in front of entrepreneurs, and you just hit it out of the park. And since then, we've become fast friends, podcasted, and uh, you recently uh, drove all the way from... Um, California all the way out to Florida to go get something from Dan Henry and come back and launch the Savage Marketer. So I'm excited you're here today. Tell me a little bit about quarantine life the last 13 or so weeks. Catch us up in the cliff notes and then we'll jump in to do a great show. Well, uh, joining the bandwagon with you guys, me and everyone I know got really, really sick back in January at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was even a hashtag called hashtag CES flu. So um, I, th I think we figured out what that was now. I actually haven't been tested for antibodies, but a lot of my friends did and they were positive. So I'm pretty sure since, you know, I shared a hotel room with one of them that I'm probably positive too. I've shared a hotel room with you before too. You know what? You, if you, you are not committed enough to your clients, if you haven't slept with them, you know, and uh, I Tony and I definitely you, nor did I sleep in the same bed with you, but I did share a hotel room with I you. I mean, so we slept in the note. same room in the same hotel. No, Jeff goes saying. the extra mile, man. <laughs> <laughs> Literally <That's right>. savage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my um, e echoing what what you guys have said as well. Um, you know, my, for me, my business has been. I mean, I guess it's been a very good time to be the king of outsourcing. So. Yep. Um, you know, I've had, you know, one of the very first things that I did, well, I have to admit, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was scared the first couple of months of COVID-19, probably actually I'd say like five weeks. So I actually am, I, I, I'm part of a mastermind group and I, <clears throat> I pay for yearly coaching for somebody, tens of thousands of dollars that I never use, you know, um, but it's just one of those people that you want to have on call all the time. And I've never called him for a year and a half. And uh, five weeks into COVID-19, I started getting these little <clears throat> messages from my clients saying, hey, you know, things are looking tough. I'm going to have to pause my retainer. And within like probably two weeks, I had seven clients message me or call me or email me and say, hey, look, I need to pause. And of course, you know, like that's my livelihood. You know, most of my monthly retainers, my clients are like 1500 bucks ish about. So I was instantly thinking, crap, I'm about to lose like, you know, a lot of recurring revenue. And uh, I actually called my my coach and I said, hey, man, uh, I actually need that call and um, kind of laid the groundwork of what's going on. And I panicked and uh, I said, you know, there's got to be something. So I ended up popping on a call and I just offered a call. I said, look, guys, I get where you're at right now. Uh, this is challenging times. Let's see how, let's see where you're at. See if I can help at all. And I got on a call with like the first couple ones and it turned out it wasn't, a, most of their decisions weren't even based on like sound logic. It was fear and scarcity. Yeah. And after we talked through it, I said, Hey, you know, 
ironically, this is the worst time to, to stop marketing, you know, like since I'm a marketing agency. So the worst thing you can do is, is stop marketing. And now I've realized, holy crap, it was such a great opportunity. I know, I know I'm not trying to minimize COVID-19, you know, 100,000 deaths, whatever else. But from an opportunity standpoint, virtually, digitally, um, there were just a lot more available eyeballs. Uh, and it was very easy to access them because everybody was forced to be home, right? <laughs> so if you have digital content and, and content marketing, and that's the story Tony was alluding to earlier, I, I just stole somebody's video from TikTok about somebody dealing toilet paper since you guys are talking about toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that video, Jeremy. But um, is this that where the guy drives up and he's like opening the car? He opens his jacket. And he's got toilet paper in it. Yeah, there's yeah. like a girl. This, yeah. and she she's like a, a toilet paper dealer, and he goes he goes how much? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she she opens up her coat and you see like a four pack roll, you know, <laughs> and she she cuts it open and gives a, a toilet paper roll, and she goes and, he, and the guy goes uh uh uh, and she goes <clears throat> one roll. <laughs> and i posted that video and i i thought it was funny and um you know it's user generated content which is a whole different you know topic but well, i didn't even create the content i just posted it reposted it and that thing went viral i never had a video 1.2 million views it was shared thousands of times um but it's it's how people feel right mm -hmm. Yeah, no, when when Jeremy was talking about the lady coming closer at Target, right? And, uh, no, 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 no. Like, I don't have my gloves on, nor do I have a mask. Please get away. Go that direction. I got my own rolls. Jeff, Jeff is is dealing rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> but what I, I think, you guys, we, we're going to have a great time. We got about 40 minutes of a show ahead. And Jeff kind of kicked us off, Josh, and I'm going to pass this back to you, of opportunities that have presented themselves right now during COVID for you. Some things like... Before the show, which I tell people, if you could only eavesdrop in on the conversations before the show, that would be some of the best content you would ever hear. Um, you know, what opportunities have presented themselves and what have you been able to do to just really, you know, hunker down in your business? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, some of our uh, opportunities, um, and actually it was my wife that kind of spun it up was, um, I remember she was going out to the store and I was like, oh, when you get go to the store, grab some more of um, the clean well hand, sanit hand spray, san the natural hand sanitizer. And uh, she went to like three or four stores while she was grocery shopping. And it's like, oh, everybody's out. And she started looking at the ingredients that were in a lot of the natural hand sanitizers. sanitizers and she's like, wait a minute. We actually have a natural bug spray that we've been selling for years that has all these same ingredients. So she went by the office, looked at it, and like all of a sudden jumped on and did a Facebook Live. Like, hey, guys here's what we have, you know, uh, you know, and if somebody, you know, if you guys want it, you know, we're discounting it right now, so people can come get it. So we ended up selling a ton of those and that spun into three new products, um, a silver hand protector spray, uh, a kind of a waterless uh, hand wash, um, and then a um, balm that has the same ingredients. So you can put that on um, and that way, and none of them have alcohol. So you're not going to dry your hands, kill your good bacteria that are on your hands, that kind of thing. So it spun off into something pretty good um, for us. Um, as you guys mentioned, I mean, sales fortunately for us have been up in general um, overall in personal care space and everything, um, you know, with all that uh, as well. Um, I mean, obviously, I think it was the end of April and beginning of um, May, they said um, um, sales levels um, have been uh, it, at what they were at Black Friday with mm -hmm. people buying, or sorry, end of March, beginning of April. So it's sales, the level of sales have been at the same as they were black through Black Friday and everything. And so people were spending, 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 not knowing what's going to happen. And then beginning of May, there was kind of like a little dip. People were like, ah, oh, wait, when is things going to open up? And so they kind of were holding cash flow and things a little bit more secure. And then now as we, things are starting to open up end of May, beginning of June, um, and overall, uh, influx is starting to move back into the marketplace, um, with people just from what we've been seeing. And, um, we use a media company that, um, uh, they do a lot of analysis on data and things like that. Um, and one of their side companies, which led to the e-com side of things has been a, um, 
uh, they've helped the last 20 president or last 20 years where the presidents win the elections based on data and everything else. So we're using the, the same company, but they have a whole e-com division. And so we've been getting a lot of this data, understanding where people's mindsets are, where their hearts are and everything like that. And one of the biggest things is and one of the biggest shifts um, is uh, the top three in our um, family, um, security and helping others. And it used to be the top of the three were the influencer, um, you know, uh, flash making money and that kind of a thing. And that is now the bottom three um, out of like 25 or something like that. Will you say, that will you say one more time? Well, yeah. Um, so the top three are um, family, um, helping others and safety or security, um, which they used to be further down kind of mid tier. And then the top three, that the ones that used to be the top three that are now the bottom three are um, the whole kind of influencer, flash, money, um, you know, Lambos, that kind of stuff, um, and, and, and that kind of focus. And so um, the tables have kind of flipped in that aspect overall. No, I appreciate you sharing. I think it, I think it's poignant for where we're at right in our society and in our world, too, is like, you know, I always preach family <clears throat> first. You got to take care of your family, your people, right? You you got to mm -hmm. you got to help today, because um, when when there is discomfort and pain and frustration going on in your immediate household, it's hard hard to kind of deal with anything else going on. And you know, Amber's um, dad. I mean, up until a week ago, we hadn't seen him in ninety days, and he's in a uh, retirement community. He wasn't able to leave, wasn't able to do a lot of yeah. things. So we rode our bikes. Amber and I rode our bikes uh, on a trail. And we called him and said, hey, and then he came up on he's an, he's got Parkinson's and he's on a walker and he comes up and he sits, you know, eight feet away and just has a conversation with us. And, you know, I didn't see it, but it pretty much brought tears to my wife's eyes because, you know, it's your family, right? Your family yeah. is the most important thing that first and foremost, it's your security blanket. And then that service component is so big and that safety is, I think, what we all care about. Um, when you were sharing, too, um, it, it really got me thinking about. When all of this first came down, and, it, and I think Jeff really hit the nail on the head for so many people listening today, five weeks or so, he was in fear, right? Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful I have a program that today that tells me that's just false evidence appearing real. Like yep. it's, just, it's just stuff that I can walk through, not stuff that is going to stop me. Um, but I, I really just want to say thank you, Josh, for sharing that. There's some good stuff that comes from it. Um, one question I do have for you is any challenges that you have faced that you've kind of overcome so far, like in this last 13 weeks that it's something that you could mention <clears throat> challenge. Uh, I mean, initially kind of challenge was, you know, it's cool to hear what you guys say. Um, it was kind of from a working, having the team work remote and virtually it's like, and seeing like the load, because my wife was the one coming into the office. Um, I stayed home with the kids since we didn't have our nanny coming at the time. So I worked from there, <clears throat> but her load increased a lot because a lot of the people that she counted on in the office from a support side of things were virtual. And for her, it's tough to off shift and, and move things over to other people. And so kind of that, a little bit of that was just the challenge was really trying to figure out how do we work virtually together? How do we still make sure we get things done and offloaded um, to the marketing team and, and, and are moving ahead? And so it took a couple of weeks to really kind of figure that out. Um, and we brought in uh, one of our good friends, uh, George Bryant. Um, he kind of came in and um, helped kind of get some of the marketing team dialed in from an operational standpoint and moving things forward, utilizing some of the things that he does um, from a virtual standpoint. So I think it's cool to hear today. I mean, Jeremy mentioned it, you know, he, he's been able to use Jeff's strategies and mm -hmm. Jeff and, and Jeremy both kind of have that op. I wasn't a virtual business. Right. I, I'm a physical <laughs> fulfillment business, hard to do fulfillment from virtual locations. So yeah. um, everybody's been working and uh, we basically have doubled our workforce. Mm -hmm. We have doubled. And so that's well over almost 30 people for us. That's a big that's a big shift. Um, a lot of people. Why did you guys double for just more volume or did you double both. to spread out? Both. OK. And then we're because we're looking at growing the business okay. the way we are. Um, need more eyes, more ears, and so bringing in new people. I mean, we're, we're the 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 interesting in, the thing out there is a lot of people um, unfortunately lost jobs, and then fortunate yeah. for us, we're <clears throat> trying to find the best of the best right mm -hmm. now. Where if you look at six months ago, you were looking for an A player, 
maybe finding a B minus C player. And it was very difficult to find those A and B players. Yeah. And so the market has allowed and opened up opportunity for us to do what we love, which is help people. And so that's what lied perfectly when you were sharing just about helping and, and service. Like, I, I love that list. It's really great. Um, question to Jeremy, the same thing. And then to, to Jeff, you know, what opportunities A presented themselves and then what's the challenge you faced? Well, I'm going to build off of what you just said, because that was one of the biggest things for us, too, um, is, you know, we, we've always had trouble, uh, I guess, finding, you know, the best publicist to expand our, our booking department. And with, you know, so many people being out of work, um, you know, I put out I put out a post on Indeed and we got uh, 120 resumes. I, I actually did 29. Inter- I, I offered 29 interviews out of that, only did 12. And we ended up hiring two people out of that. But like, you know, these are two super high quality, super experienced individuals because there's just a much larger job pool. So it's, you know, really, um, it, it's not great why it's happening. But at the same time, as an employer, you do need to take advantage of that and, and you know, hire some people that are more qualified you, that wouldn't typically be looking for a job. Well, so for us, you, that- when you're talking to those people, too, and mm-hmm. you ask them like, hey, you know, like it said March, like what happened? Like I got laid off. Yeah, I'm like that. Tell That's me, exactly what happened. Please tell me about the experience because I need to hear it because mm-hmm. I want to understand what that person just went through because I'm going to I'm going to hopefully bring that person into a different experience and I don't want to have because that now is a fear any mm-hmm. job they're yeah. going to take that's going to happen to them again. Well, and at the same time, like the, the viewpoint I had on it is like, it's got to be pretty cool for somebody to like actually get a job at a time when other people aren't because that it's got to make you feel pretty good. You know what I mean? Like, like, wow, you know, there's a larger job of people, a larger pool of people looking for jobs. And I just got one. So I think to, at the same time, it can also has to make you feel pretty good doing that. So for us, we, we looked at it as that. Um, at the same time, like the beginning of March ish, uh, we had like about three weeks with no sales because things were pretty slow. People were freaked out. They didn't want to spend their money and whatever it may be. So we actually took it as an opportunity to rebuild a lot of our processes because we looked at, you know, what we were doing and, um, you know, we were kind of built to be a, the current way we were currently built was to only be a high six figure business. And, you know, by redoing a lot of our processes, by restructuring a lot of how we did things, you know, we set ourselves up for that next level of growth um, and, you know, to go past, you know, seven figures at that point. So like we, we've really redone a lot of things and use this as an opportunity to, to create growth. And, and I will say too, just like being, you know, I was, I was a history major. My master's is in ancient history. Um, just like looking at like, history, right? Like so many great companies and so many great entrepreneurs and fortunes have been created in times when things weren't doing well. Um, like I had uh, Mitzi Purdue on my podcast not too long ago, who was the, uh, the widow of Frank Purdue from Purdue Chicken. And they actually pivoted their business during the Great Depression, and which was one of the things that created a, a business all over the country. And their father was the creator of Sheridan Hotels. That whole business also came out of the Depression. So there's so many opportunities for people that are willing to find it. Um, you know, like Jeff said, he was kind of scared early on, but he figured out what he needed to do and move forward. It's people that are going to take a look at it like that, man, that have a lot of opportunity ahead of them. Wow. Good stuff, Jeremy. Uh, Mr. Jeff J. Hunter. So something of an opportunity, maybe it's presented themselves, you know, five weeks in, you're like, okay, opportunity one, calling the guy I've been paying money to not utilizing. So number one, and then number two, a challenge you faced and how you overcame it. Well, I guess the first thing would have to definitely be just that flipping mindset when I was, you know, scared. And then I just started having conversations with, with my, my own clients, of course, you know, that was priority number one, right. Was saving my own ass. (laughs) Um, You know, once I had those conversations with my clients and realized that, you know, uh, you know, they were just unsure what to do. And that's when I realized, I said, Holy smokes, people are really looking for like sound advice and leadership. And, you know, some of the voices that have been really loud have not been the most sound voices. So I guess you could say I realized that there was some opportunity for some sound advice. So I wrote a couple of Facebook posts. One of them was talking about, you know, three ways that you can use a virtual assistant to, to build revenue, to generate revenue in your business and also how to use the crisis in a positive way to get your message out there in front of more people. And the post that I wrote got a lot of 
attention and actually the general manager of digitalmarketer.com reached out to me and he said, wow, that was a really powerful post. Then he says, you know, we really see you as our kind of virtual assistant, virtual team building guy here at Digital Marketer. And uh, we'd love to have, you know, you speak to our thousands of, of students at digitalmarketer.com and do a presentation about that specifically. They said, would you be willing to create a presentation on exactly how to do the, you know, the three things you're discussing in your post? And I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, so I, um, I got featured in the, uh, in the, the expert section, they call it the insider the digital marketer <laughs> insider um expert insider but it was really an interesting opportunity where I, I did a live stream basically with digital marketer and uh that presented so many opportunities um i've just been getting contacted so many times and you know just so you guys know the level i mean this is like molly Pittman, as their firestone like oh, these yeah. are, these were like big names and uh, for me to be in there was like That's awesome. really uh, next level. So that was an incredible opportunity that, that presented itself, Tony. But you and, still had um, time last night to play uh, 11 straight <laughs> video games until 3.30 in the morning. So that's what I love about you. You outsource, you figure it out, you find way, you have, get help from people. I mean, Jeremy's talking about that. Josh is talking about that. I'm talking mm -hmm. about that. I mean, leverage is like the thing that so many people don't want to use. They think that's you know, a big something to make a little things happen to swing open, you know? Yeah, I have, uh, I have mixed feelings about that because you know, the sweat bubble comes often because, you know, um, I've actually doubled my team over the past about year and a half. And most of the growth has come in the past five months. And I just, I mean, we just hired 30 people in the past 30 days. Boom. So it's been, um, it's been, we're over 80 now, Tony, on the team. So it's, uh, it's been really interesting and you know and i have like probably another five to ten that need to be higher the next seven to ten days because i've got a new con one of the one of the calls that i made whilst playing call of duty is turning into five full-time dedicated assistants for a large lending company here in america so um we're creating a new system called a a whole new virtual assistant called a loma a loan officer marketing assistant so it's just a really incredible opportunity. Um, and, and that's back to what I was going to say about the, the whole leverage thing is that last year I couldn't play video games until three 30 in the morning. I was really busy last year. <laughs> I was doing way too much stuff myself last year. And even as the, the king of outsourcing, I think that that's the eternal struggle. And another reason why I'm actually uh, relaunching, I'm rewriting some, my nine and 10 life is going to become the nine and 10 rule. It's still really important, the nine and ten rule. It's just that I don't really like teaching outsourcing anymore. <laughs> um, but I still believe it's super important for people to understand how to do it, you know, and and how to optimize their life. So, well, I appreciate you sharing. I mean, I think there's so much for you guys to hopefully are taking notes, you know, watching or listening today. Um, I bought the domain while we were talking. If you saw me looking down, Jeff said flip the mindset, so I bought flipthemindset.com because <laughs> I just mm. I just realized I'm like that's wow, sucker. I, I've been reading that for a while. So thank you for that gift. Get royalties. Um, <laughs> uh, it's let's funny because networking. Um, I know Mr. Felber, you do a phenomenal job. You, you've got a, a great arsenal of people. When I first met you, um, even the room that I was in, it was all relationships. You knew people, Vinny knew people, but next thing you know, there's Gary V sitting there. Um, I've known through the years, Dave Asprey. I know that, you know, your list of kind of people that you've come in contact with had the opportunity to sit down. There's a local guy here in Denver, Joel Com, who, you know, I mm -hmm. saw you yeah. interviewing a couple of years back at TNC, um, Damon John, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, everybody, cause uh, you're where everybody is. I know you're in that big mastermind as well. So I know that there's, there's not something that you're not doing. It's, I want to ask some questions around networking. And so think about the person listening right now who doesn't have a network like yours. What are some tips, maybe some ideas that you could help somebody how to engage their network. And there's three really smart people on this panel today, Jeremy, Jeff, and you, who have really done a phenomenal job of building a large, vast network. So I wanna help the individual today who wants to learn how to scale and get guests. 
you know, that we all three down to the bottom, all you guys experience really high caliber guests on your shows. So Josh, I'll let you go first. Maybe something you could help somebody with today on how to network. And then maybe one thing that you've done to kind of grow your network through COVID. For sure. Um, I, I get asked that question a lot. Like, you know, how do you get the guests? How do you create that? And a lot of it is just asking. I mean, that's really what it all boils down to. And a lot of people, I guess the fear, as you mentioned, I mean, they don't, they have that fear. Oh, this, they, they put people, whoever it may be, somebody on a pedestal, like, oh, you know, they're on Shark Tank or they're over here. You know, I, I can't, you know, I, I'm nervous. I, I don't want to ask them. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. And I, I mean, I don't know if Jeremy, you see that with you bring guys help book people. So, I mean, you probably see that more than I do. Um, but, uh, is, is just asking, you know, reach out. I mean, there's so many people that have either just direct message on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, um, you know, and it's not like my first thing is always never like, hey, I want you, you know, come on my show. You know, it's I try to give them something, you know, something I really, whether I've followed them for a long time, a book that I've read from them, things like that, and, and give them, you know, an opportunity. And the one uh, mastermind you mentioned, Tony, and that I was out in LA and back in November before I got sick with the COVID thingy um, was, uh, you know, Marcus Lemonis was there and he was talking and I think I was like two rows back or three rows back and he was talking and everything. I didn't get to interact with him before this, before they, before he went on and started talking and like right in the middle, he came over, walked up next to me, put his hand on my shoulder. He's like, man, if anybody's going to follow somebody, these guys should follow this guy right here. He goes, there's so much value and so much content and so many people that he knows and tries to provide so much free, um, uh, just value creation for people. And he, he kind of was going down that whole path. And so after then we started talking again and I didn't, he's like, oh dude, I follow you on all your social channels and everything else. And we'd met several years back a few different times and vaguely kind of interacted here and there. And then from there, now it's led into a lot more stuff that we were doing that we're starting to work on um, potentially together and things like that. Uh, but, you know, initially it was just reaching out and DM and him initially. Same with even Gary V was um, like years ago when kind of Twitter was the main platform. Him and I used to DM each other all the time on Twitter. And so when it got to a certain point, you know, I just reached out to him to be on the show and it back initially when... Um, I think when you mentioned it at um, TNC um, back when he spoke out there and everything. And so I think really it's, it's just taking that first line of action, taking that first step and just asking and giving them, you know, creating some value for the other person um, initially off. It, it's not magic. There's no secret. Um, it's just doing it. So easy. Yet so many people get to the, the plate and strike out because of fear. Right. So many people think oh, I got this and they get up there and like, I can't. Oh, man, no one's going to read my email. No one's going to read my message. So, Jeremy, I'd love your take on that as well. Well, I, I got to say, first of all, I think Josh has a leg up on all of us because they've been putting him on Mr. Clean bottles for like 40 years. So everybody knows who he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to brand Josh after someone. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to Josh Shelber Club. <laughs> and I got a ginger beard, too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't trim it down today a little. Uh, I, I love it. It's like people that know me well know I'm a huge wise ass. But anyway, um, it's it's funny because like for me, it's all been based around like the podcast and like, you know, how I've really connected with people there. And like, I, I guess the, the, the place to start is kind of like if you don't decide what you want, you'll get what you don't want. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times people like especially when they're looking at like guests or who they're going to have conversations with. Like one of the first things I started with, man, was a top 100 list of like people I really admired. And it's a, it's a Google sheet. It's been going for six years now and I keep adding names to it. I keep adding when the last time they were contacted, what was the last thing we talked about. And like, it, it's just consistently, you know, checking in, seeing what's going on, seeing where you can help. Like, like Dave Asprey, it took me four years to interview that guy. Or like, you know, uh, you know, one of my favorite race car drivers, Elio Castroneves, it took me two and a half years to get him. So it's just like, you know, it's, I don't know if I'm the best networker out there. I'm just like painfully persistent. So like, that's been one of the things that's just been really good for me is continually following up, continually checking in and saying like, how can I help you? But then like, for me, when I interview somebody, um, 
you know, and I, I guess Josh, Tony and Jeff, you guys can all attest to this because I've interviewed all of you. Like I really take the time to, to really know some th very particular things about that person and, and what they care about, what matters to them. And it allows me to create a really cool connection with them because um, people go on a lot of podcasts and the person that they're talking to knows nothing about them. You know what I mean? And it's not a great experience for them. So like, I've really kind of gone out of my way to, to do that. And there's even been an experience. I had a, had a guest uh, three, four years ago at this point, four years ago at this point that I wrote, found a random blog post. He wrote, he wrote about CS Lewis and how big of a fan he was and how he liked GK Chesterton. So I collect old books. I'm weird like that. And I had a 110 year old version of an anthology of GK Chesterton. So I mailed it to the guy. Um, and it was just kind of like a nice thing I could add value to him. And we had an amazing conversation, you know, we're still friends to this day and it's just really finding out what particularly, you know, you find exciting or interesting or something that that person cares about and just showing it that you, you give a crap too. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, I don't know that there's a special technique around it rather than I just, I care about people and I consistently follow up. No, I, he, I wrote notes. So Josh just had ask, mm -hmm. and then I wrote for you, don't ask, then live with the regret. Yeah. Right? You live with the regret. Um, don't buy that dot com, Jeff. I'm probably going to buy that. Um, <laughs> but but I'm serious because I think and then what I want to follow up, Josh, the two between you two, Jeremy and Josh are going to be fan. And I know Josh gonna, and Jeff, you're going to hit it out of the park um, is a lot of people just ask once and then go, well, I never heard back. I'm like, that yeah. didn't work. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of people find that you got to ask multiple times. I mean, if McDonald's, you know, used to advertise seven times to get you in to buy a Big Mac. Today, it's like 14, 28, depending on what, you know, news you're looking at or what, you know, feedback you're seeing. But it takes time for people. Josh, I mean, how awesome is that? You know, Marcus Limonis, you know, comes through a crowd and just says, dude, you got to follow this guy. I've been following this guy for a long time because you also did the work a long time ago and you get to right. live the, out the accolades today, too. A lot of people, their hustle is like, I tried. It didn't work. So I quit. I'm like, well, shame on you. You live with the regret. Now I know a guy over here, Jeff, has been really, really good at DMs and working and networking, and you know, even sometime probably had your your VAs doing a lot of it, but also built traction to get you that momentum where you go now put a video out on social media or you write a post and the engagement is through the roof. It's not something you did once and quit. It's something you continuously get better at. It's a practice. So talk a little bit about kind of how you're networking and maybe if you have a secret sauce to helping people get ahead with networking. I can't hear him. It's just so profound. It made him silent. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of silence. Uh, well, one of the things that, that I realized just because I obviously just started my own podcast, right? Um, is that I never was really leveraging it. The, I, I never really understood the power of a podcast. Um, and as far as making connections and relationships, I mean, that's what business is about. Like that's the foundation of it all. And whether it's virtual or not, I think that it's opened up a lot of opportunities to kind of start those relationships, you know? And one of the strange things that's happened to me <clears throat> is that I recorded all of my first 13 episodes for my podcast last year before COVID-19. They were all in person. They, I started from like a, October of last year and uh, finished the website and everything up. And I think launched it on the first or second week of January and uh, just finished my 20th episode came out on Monday. That was really exciting. That was yesterday. So, or two days ago, I guess for everybody it's Wednesday now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what, but I don't even know what day it is. See, Tony? Uh, see how I did some quick thinking there. But anyway, um, what's really interesting, though, is that I, I I figured out, like, I'm using my podcast to get in front of the right people, right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and now what I've been doing, Jeremy, you might want to think about this, too, is uh, – for your for your VA, um, I have one of my executive assistants who logs into my LinkedIn account every day, and finds podcasts and specific niches that I specifically want to be in. Usually, sales, HR, marketing, branding, and basically find them on LinkedIn, and then then they go in and find people that have been posting at least in the past seven to ten days um, on their LinkedIn account 
their podcast stuff and then they go into my account they like the video they'll comment say something nice about the podcast or whatever send a connection request saying wow i love your latest episode with fill in the blank whoever the last guest was it was really powerful um and then so now i've just built a whole network of like podcast hosts and they follow up with like hey you know i was just thinking about your last podcast i've been blah 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 Right. I've been talking about COVID-19, whatever else, talking about building virtual teams, this and that. I said, if you think that would be any value to your audience, let me know. <sighs> and I'm getting booked on podcasts like at least three to five times a week. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's been very interesting. Well, you know, the, the most important thing out of what you all three shared is just going for it. I think, you know, so much of what we're afraid of is failure. Mm -hmm. And the, the fear and the uncertainty and the doubt and the self-talk, you guys are all smashed it out of the park. So I just want to say thanks for sharing that piece. Totally. Um, the last one we're going to- Tony, can I, can I add one thing to that before we move on? Just because uh, I have, I yeah, have one I more thing. Go for it. I have one more thing that I've learned kind of around that. Because like in the, in the whole like PR world, I think part of the things people have to understand too, like there's a reason and a time when people do interviews and why they do interviews. So I think too often they're like, you know, I want to interview Josh, but Josh isn't doing media right now because he doesn't have anything coming out. And it's just, that's one of the things I track in my spreadsheet. Like, do they have a book launch coming up? Do they have a product launch coming up? What, a new uh, a new album coming out? So like, um, you know, I got to do, uh, I survived an interview with Ted Nugent um, after finding out he had a new album coming out and they wanted to get on other media to talk about it. So you have to kind of know what's going on in their life and their world and why they would even do media. No, I think that's 100% true. It's I mean, I've had Damon John on a few times, and this last time was right before his book launch. You know, his team reached out. I was like, hey, Damon wants to come on. You know, his book's coming out in like <laughs> two weeks or something. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And, you know, so we had to turn everything around and get it back out. But I think one key that you mentioned, Jeremy, earlier was um, caring, you know, caring for the other person. I think that was huge because um, <clears throat> a lot of people, I think, go at it and they're like, oh, I just want to book this person on but there's no caring. There's no, there's yep. nothing behind it. And then they want them on the show to mm -hmm. elevate their show. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, and I like what Jeff did. Um, you put a video out where you spoke before Gary V at an event and then you positioned it and flipped it around where you're now asking Gary a question and you point blank said, you know, like, Hey, this is what I'm thinking. And then Gary says, you know, I do it for two reasons. One, I'm going to get a good piece of content out of it regardless. Right. And then every guest who comes on after me, is going to be at a heightened level. They're just mm -hmm. going to be at a, they're going to play at a higher level. So I think it's also good to go back to what Jeremy talked about having your, like your 100 list. And then if you listen to Jeremy, he's been putting more names on there. It was probably now a 600 list or yeah. a 700 list. It just keeps growing and growing because you didn't quit because mm -hmm. 100 is awesome, but like 102. And I tell people all the time, when you, when, when you want to find pearls, th th there's a stat that says you got to shock at least a hundred to find three pearls. Mm -hmm. And your three pearls may not come until 97, 98, 99. And then you're like, damn, should I shuck again? And you may just find a fourth. You just don't know. So I thank you so much for that. What I'm going to do is I love this segment. This is a good piece. We're going to wrap up a little bit with community and then I'm going to have you share. You need a piece of paper, something to write with. I'm going to give you some of the themes from today's talk. Um, and then what you do is you, you get to kind of close and pitch out your kind of a little bit of your business, but it's your three minute close at a keynote. So you're mm -hmm. closing out, the audience is like listening, they're ready for you. And uh, so you're gonna take some of these words and your goal is to weave them in. This is what I used to do in radio. This was like one of my favorite uh, ways to kind of wrap up a stop set in radio and, and talk about what was coming was to weave in the artist's names and, and get them in and then talk about something that was coming up and pull the audience in because they're like, oh, you're gonna play that song again? Are you gonna play that artist? So this is something I learned. I've been doing it for years and I love it. Um, but the last piece, I want to speed through this. So Josh, we're going to go to you, Jeremy, and then Jeff. Um, how are you giving back to your community? That's what I'd love to know. And then we'll come back for the final piece. Sure. Um, for us, I mean, one of the big things we've been trying to do initially um, uh, when all this hit, um, we reached out to some of our suppliers that we work with and um, we're working on you know, bringing in N95 masks and just giving them to um, hospitals and places like that where other people were selling them and trying to get them to buy them and all sorts of things were like, I mean, it's, it's like a buck 60 out of pocket landed and, you know, 
a mask and let's just donate it and uh, and help out. And so a uh, combination of that and, you know, just some of our hand products, things like that. Um, some hospitals and places had to have the alcohol, 70% alcohol version or whatever. So, um, but other places that could utilize it, you know, we definitely tried to help out. Um, and then just uh, from a additional, just trying to give as, you, especially with the podcast is we try to go back and pull um, relevant highlights from all the different episodes and then create compilations over the last, I think, five weeks we've been doing that. And so, and, and have a theme behind it. And whether it was, I think last week or the week before was about homeschooling and educating your kids at homes. I mean, at home, because I mean, the latest stat is 60% of the people right now going back in the fall are looking at homeschooling their kids mm -hmm. compared to, you know, previous. So, it's yeah i mean the stats are huge so i've reached out to different people i know in that field that are have curriculums and programs and trying to see what we can do to move it into some kind of digital space mm. and and do that i mean we've we've used some great ones with our kids but um how can we provide something that has a great cur curriculum based on monastery and all different sorts of things and provide it at minimal minimal cost, you know, or no cost potentially, um, to people. And so that's something we're working on right now. Um, kind of background. Look at that guy right there. See, <laughs> it's all about connections and networking. And I love your heart for giving back. Thanks so much for serving and helping others. Cause I think at the end of the day, right. It goes back to your list, family, helping and safety. And right. And that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to provide opportunities and solutions for people today. So Jeremy and I, don't think we've ever met in person. So Jeff and Josh, you've been able to take, uh, I've been able to take a selfie with you. So Jeremy, you're the only one. So we'll have to get you up on this wall. So. Damn. Or well, you can do a selfie now and then like cut and That's paste. The and move them Sorry. Up <laughs> <laughs> Photoshop. <laughs> Digital selfie. <laughs> so the questions to you as well, Jeremy, what are you doing to give back? Well, so I, as I said, I, I, help with a, a business association. It's a national association called the Effective Management Association. What we were doing, and a lot of it is traditional business owners. They don't have a huge online presence and stuff like that. So we would do like a, a bi-weekly interview webinar or something like that. What we started doing is we started doing them almost twice a week. And we we're doing around like, how do you take your business online? How do you add a lot of these things into your business? Because we wanted to give them at least a cause point to like stop being affected a lot of stuff out there. Uh, so that was one of the really big things we did. Uh, also at the same time, um, I got to do this not too long ago. It was very cool. Um, one of the schools here in New Jersey that's still been doing a lot of stuff online in the Princeton area, um, they had me on a few weeks ago to do actually a career day uh, on Google Hangouts, talk about my, my job and my business and how things work and you know what's the podcasting world like. So I was able to do that and kind of give back to the next generation, which has been very cool. Um, and I just want to add one other thought to this too. Um, I had a guest on not too long ago, and Josh may know this guy, but, uh, but James Maskell uh, wrote a book not too long ago called The Community Cure. And he, when he t took a look at, you know, whether it's in the health, it's his is really based around health, but I think this applies to a lot of different things. He said that there's this dichotomy where people think that it's either, you know, government's going to save you or, or, uh, you know, economics or business is going to save you. And he said, that's not actually true. The thing that's actually missing is what he calls the third pillar and that's community. And he said like over the years, the idea of community has been minimized and it's been kind of brought down where it's either these two things we're forced into and it's really about us taking care of our people it's about us taking care of our own health and it's about us you know really remembering how to be human beings so i just wanted to add that to this conversation too no i appreciate that yeah thank you all right jeff you gotta you gotta take us quick how have you been able to give back you know i hate to say it but i don't like the term giving back because it it assumes that i that i've you know that we it's like transactional you know i think it's just so important to give and i think in every relationship we it's important to give even if it's transactional but <clears throat> uh i've definitely done some some interesting things lately i've been putting out a lot of new content and the thing that i'm more excited about right now is i started a 501c3 with with jake cortez one of my um, one of my friends and uh, it's called mind hack habits and it's literally to help people that are on the edge of going and making one of the worst decisions of their life called college um, <laughs> and uh, about to spend a crap ton of money and you know find out you know what the real world is going to be like after they graduate or not 
but um, it's it's for budding entrepreneurs. Uh, my focus is really on 17 to 25 year olds. Um, I want to help people that are lost and stuck in the system that, uh, you know, the high school teaches kids how to go to college and college teaches kids how to go into, you know, doctorate school or their master's degree. And then they come out and, and they have no idea how to live in the real world and be productive and successful. So and Jake and Jake's side, he actually was incarcerated for quite some time. He um, he killed somebody um and he was uh he did he d served quite a bit of time in jail uh prison um so for him it's all about you know getting people back out of the system and creating lives and a lot of these these uh people that come out of prison um they can't just go get a job you know like there's not a lot of jobs saying hey we'd like to hire some criminals some felons um as a matter of fact it's made it very uh, hard made it very challenging for a lot of them to, to start over again. And that's why the, the rate of going back into prison is so high. So uh, I, I've been creating training with him, free materials, you know, that we can, um, that we can basically help people guide themselves on becoming an entrepreneur, which is the easiest way, I mean, easiest way today to, to earn money is to, to earn money yourself. So uh, we just we're empowering them, showing them how to start businesses, how to create valuable, um, how to create valuable marketing agencies and, and um, just do good things with their lives. Man, I appreciate it. I, and I, and I, I love the, the giving back aspect and comment. Yeah, I think, you know, we're going to take us into the, the final close. So imagine you are sitting talking to your audience. They came to your event, your mastermind, your agency expo, whatever you want to call it and you're the closer you're going to close and this is a chance for you to practice and sharpen the tools um, so th this is where i said you need a pen and something to write with or a piece of paper um, you're going to put uh, family is this is one of six and you can sprinkle in two to three or you can sprinkle all three all six of them in but family ask these are all things that came up today processes community outsourcing and care. Those were things that were kept coming up. They were highlighted today in, in, in different ways. So I think it's really, really cool. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Jeff go, Jeremy, and then I'm gonna make Josh Felver take us out because he he, knew, he knows something about making banks. So um, I'm gonna, uh, the bank doesn't open until Jeff's uh, until Josh is done. So Mr. Hunter, all these J's have really screwed me up today, but I apologize <laughs> if I hacked anyone. Um, Jeff, you are up. So something about maybe you, your business. Drop a link to where one person they you know where people can find you and then drop out and let's have fun for three minutes and we'll pass it to Jeremy and then to John. Well, first off, Tony, I just want to use this time actually to, to share my experiences with you. And, uh, you know, you've been a really great friend of mine, uh, an invaluable mentor of mine. And uh, you're one of the very few people that actually has my real phone number. You know, most everyone just has me on Facebook Messenger or something like that. Thanks for listening to the Networking to Remote. Tony, Remember, the most you are not time. alone. Stay um, connected. But but I've learned it's important to answer when Tony calls. Um, even if he just wants to call and talk about a burrito, because he's from this area in Central Valley, and his favorite burrito ever made is made like 20 minutes away from my house. Um, but anyway... With that said, uh, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag on my podcast. I've been super happy to launch that SavageMarketer.com, um, and uh, excited to have you on it. It's gonna be in person though, Tony. I'm coming out to Denver. Okay, um, I wanna I wanna also give a shout out to the virtual assistant business VAStafford.com. Those guys have been incredible. Um, I have to say, my project management team right now. Shout out to Miles, Julio, RS, Redora. Those, uh, even my own assistant, Nicole, they have changed my life, giving me the ability to play video games until 3.30 in the morning instead of doing the hustle and the grind. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my opportunity. That's what I'm I'm all about. Of course, JeffJHunter.com. Um, now that I'm Google verified, you guys can, uh, can Google yeah. Jeff Hunter and all of my things are there. <laughs> no, you're actually on IMDb as well, right? You're yeah. An actor or something like that. I'm a publicist. Yeah. 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 I started working with some really cool celebrity clients. One of them, Deborah Driggs, who um, she was a Playboy Playmate. She's, matter of fact, she, she was featured in 
Uh, she was a, a Playboy Playmate of the Month um, a couple times, but uh, she's also she's also big again because the episode back in the 1990s that she was in had Trump on the cover of that Playboy magazine. <laughs> so yeah, she's she's jumped back up into uh, infamous. Oh, I thought you were gonna flash us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to see this. <laughs> well, hey, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today. I tell everybody throughout the process, you gave an hour of your life to go help somebody today, which is, is in my opinion, some of the coolest stuff we can do as humans is to help others. So thank you for uh, crossing off one of Josh's things, which is, you know, helping and service. That's really, really huge for me. All right, Jeremy, let's pass it to you. I feel like every time I hear Denver, I think of that South Park episode, you can't beat Denver. Um, anyway, <laughs> Uh, for me, man, I'm just passionate about stories. You know what I mean? And it's just like, uh, I feel like there's so much we can learn from stories and there's so much growth that can come from stories, you know, that came from, you know, being a historian that came from, you know, being somebody that was interested in, in literature and religion and things like that. So for me, I'm all about stories and that goes in everything I do, you know, whether it's helping people sell their stories at command your brand, um, you know, commandyourbrand.com, then, you know, you need to be the one to tell your story. You need to be out there helping a lot of people. Thanks but for listening time, to the networking remote. What I've done with my own Remember, podcast, I've been able to tell stories. You are not alone. Amazing, Stay you know, connected. Class individuals and figure out, you know, what adversity did you come up with? What things did you use to help you grow? And I just, to me, like there's so much growth that can come from stories and in everything I, everything I do, every shape, you know, and form, it's, it's really about being a storyteller and using that to help others. Man, I appreciate that. And it was awesome to have you here today. And like, like I said, it was really cool to, to be on your show not too long ago. And just, I love your personality. I love your energy and I love your sarcasm and I love <laughs> how you show up. So it's awesome. <laughs> And I owe a big apology to Mr. Felber. It's time to have you on the podcast. We've talked about it for years. Let's come on the Be Fulfilled <laughs> show. Let's make something happen. But hey, at least we're podcasting now. Right. Now I want to get you on my other show as well. But um, I just want to say thank you to Josh. You know, Josh, you've been one of those constant champions in the background, just doing a lot of stuff for a lot of people, making a big difference. And you're not tooting your own horn. I know that you're out there helping your wife. You're an amazing dad. I've seen you interact with your kids numerous times. I love the fact of how you teach them. You're teaching them real world, actionable, entrepreneurial things that they're going to use and they're going to remember forever. Um, it, like I kind of look at it sometimes and go, I wish I would have had that with my dad. I wish I would have had that moment where my dad was teaching me, let's go, go sell something, go try something. Like, and a lot of the times the kids are just doing it without you saying, go do it because they were watching. And I just yeah. want to give you that, that <clears throat> those kudos right now that, you know, I, I silently watch you. I don't stalk you, but I silently watch you. And uh, you've, you've done an amazing job, you and Trina. You be you should be really, really proud as parents. Um, so just what you've been able to create. And I know you've got a lot of good people around you. So I thought you'd close out today, and then I'll come back, and I'll close the show. Josh, cool. that, that fog on your window is Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the handprints last night. <laughs> no, Tony, I appreciate you uh, inviting all of us on and – I mean, just an amazing group here to share their insights and um, different ways that they're making an impact and helping other people and really just creating levels of value right now through just kind of the challenges that people are going through and different things like that. And for me, I mean, I think one of the big things right now, especially is perception, um, perception through the media, perception of what the direction of what people are, what they want people to think. And so being able to have this type of amazing content to get in front of you and everyone watching this episode uh, to help you sometimes you know, or somewhere in your life or in your business, make that little shift, make that connection, um, make that, um, that other person you may reach out for that you really care for, that you're going to help bring them up. I mean, obviously, suicide rates during this time have increased dramatically, um, whether it's entrepreneurs or just people, just anybody in general. And so through this video and through this content, you know, hopefully it's going to make some kind of impact or change in your life to be able to um, just help somebody else. And I think it's just taking those little steps. We don't have to change a billion people. We don't have to change a million people. But if we can change that one person next to us or that one person that caught it, an episode of this, and then you guys share this video with more people or you push this out there on your feeds or, you know, these little snippets or shoot a little quick a snippet and send it to somebody you know that needs to hear this content right now, that's going to make the biggest dramatic impact um, and change that you may not know, but that's going to help that other person. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, just for me, I mean, obviously you can check me out. I mean, they got my link right there in my, in my, uh, 
whatever show bio thingy on the website here. You've been showing it for the entire so show, just so you're clear. <laughs> so any content there, I have it's all free content. You can opt in. It's all free email content. It's all free videos, um, over 250 plus episodes that you can uh, check out with Making Bank. Um, and just tons of amazing content to help you, help your family, help your business, help your life. Um, make those little minute shifts that are going to move you forward um, in what you're doing. Uh, Primal Life Organics, a natural um, personal care brand from dental to skin care to whatever you need to help improve your life right now. Um, just naturally um, being able to make that shift. And, you know, as you guys talked about um, earlier health, I think Jeremy was mentioning health is a super important thing. And, um, you know, he, he wants to get out and start working out. And, you know, it was interesting because last night I had to teach our Krav Maga class over at the martial arts studio since our main instructor couldn't make it. And, you know, the perception of people and some people were wearing masks and some people weren't. I was kind of on the weren't side. But I mean, it's that perception of, <laughs> uh, you know, what is it real? Is it still really there? Is it, you know, and so you can make those and take that perception blank out all the negative media and, and, and utilize information like this as a positive force in your life and what you're doing today. So Tony, uh, Jeremy, Jeff, thank you guys. An honor to be here today with you guys and uh, just creating some amazing um, videos for people. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. On behalf of Josh Felber, and Jeremy Slate, and Mr. Jeff J. Hunter, my name is Tony Grebmeyer. And until next time, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, Choose to make today the absolute best day of your life. Thanks for listening to the Networking Remote. Remember, you are not alone. Stay connected 